Hi guys, today's video will be a review of accounts receivable. So the objective today is to understand what account receivable is and how it's valued and to understand how to use the contra account allowance for doubtful debt. Okay, so we're going to start off with account allowance, uh, accounts receivable. So what is it? It represents revenue that is recognized but is uncollected and the debtor has also been given notification that the amount remains and remains owing and they still owe us. So the journal entry normally uh, um, for this would be debit accounts receivable and X amount and then we also credit sales also by an X amount. So what we've been doing so far. So it's a current asset because credit sales for the period are expected to be collected by the next financial year and the measurement and the valuation of accounts receivable uh, on the balance sheet is given by the lower of cost uh, which is equal to the original value of credit sales plus any interest charged on credit um, and net realizable value which is the amount expected, actually expected to be collected, which is equal to cost. So this amount minus a dot d dot d, which is equal to allowance for doubtful debt. Okay, and allowance for doubtful debt is something that realizes the risk that um, we won't get paid back what we are owed. So why do accountants actually do this? Well, accountants are conservative and will recognize the possibility of people not paying. And um, so therefore we will realize that um, if we can't get all our costs back, we do need to recognize that um, the net realizable value would be an amount that costs minus allowance for doubtful debt, any allowance for risk. And so we must be prudent not to overstate our assets of accounts receivable. Okay, so allowance for doubtful debt. So what is it? It's a contra account that presents a more realistic view of the net amount expected to be collected. And to establish this account, we need to recognize the bad debt expense with the sales revenue during the operations. Um, and that reflects the matching principle. And um, the matching principle is matching revenues and expenses in the same financial period as they directly, um, as they directly relate to each other. Um, if we only record it when debt is uncollectible, that means the expense rec is recorded in an irrelevant period. For example, if um, if we just write off, uh, if we start making our bad debt expense in, say, two years' time, we uh, write someone off because they can't pay us, um, we'll, we'll, rec we'll record an expense um, in two years' time that won't reflect the financial performance during that two years. So in that second year, that expense um, of bad debt should have been um, correlated to this year's, except in next, um, if you post it in the second year's one, um, that it will have nothing to do with the expenses and the revenues collected during that period, and therefore that's why it's going to be, an ir it, it'd be irrelevant in that period. Okay, so the creation of doubtful debt, it requires an estimation of bad debt by management, so the journal entry for that would be debit bad debt expense credit allowance for doubtful debt of an X amount depending on the size of the estimation okay so um, so bad debt expenses should not be deducted off the accounts receivable as it's only a provision um, we should only deduct a write-off if we uh, if we know that it's going to be uncollectible, given some proof that uh, they won't be able to pay us back. Okay, so we should only write off when we know um, that they won't pay us back, and we've given when we're given proof of that. Okay, so um, how do we write off? So we're going to use the so method one is writing off using the allowance for doubtful debt method. So firstly, we need to create our doubtful debt account. So SCLTD estimated bad debt of $1,000 this period, so we debit bad debt expense $1,000 and then we credit allowance for doubtful debt for doubtful debt of $1,000 as well debt $1,000 okay and then when we when we write off debt, we write off uncollectible debt of $500. To write it off, we write it off firstly, accounts receivable, $500, because now we, we know that we can't collect that $500 back, so we're going to reduce our accounts receivable by the amount 
that amount. And then we also reduce our allowance for doubtful debt for doubtful debt. Debt by 500, okay? So as you can see here, it doesn't actually, um, when we write something off, it won't affect the expenses. It will only affect um, the measure of assets and things like that. So uh, what a, so what about, uh, what, what happens when we actually can recover that $500? Say after two years, the guy that said he was bankrupt can actually repay us back. So what do we do? Um, so step one, we reinstate the accounts receivable. So we reverse the write-off. So we then, we debit back accounts receivable by 500 because now they can pay us. We credit back the allowance for doubtful debt, ADD for short. And then we record the collection of cash. So we increase cash by $500 because they paid us back and then we credit accounts receivable by 500 Okay, and then um, the second method is the direct write-off period or the write-off method and that involves just um, recording bad debt expense right at the time when the cash or when the accounts receivable um, is recognized that we can't collect it. So the notification of um, bankrupt $500 and it cannot um, repay us. So that's when if we're using that method, we record the bad whoop, debt expense then at the time he can't pay us and then we credit accounts receivable by 500 at that time. Um, so the problem is the expense can occur after the sales period and that will affect profits in the next financial year even though they're irrelevant to the financial performance of that year itself. Okay. So that's the, that's the end of the video, guys. Um, thanks for sticking around. I hope you learned something today. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.